and welcome. My name's Stephen Dickinson. You're joining us here live from AWS reInvent. And I'm joined by Brendan Grady from Click. Hey, Brendan, welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm good. Great. I'm good. We finally got here. We've, we've done our 20,000 steps to get onto the show. Let's get the listeners and viewers orientated. Tell us a little bit about your role and then a little bit about Click. Sure, not a problem. So, so I got my name, Brendan Grady, got it right. So that's a good start. It's always a good one. To always a good way. Here. Absolutely. I'm the general manager of the analytics business unit at Click. Um, Click is a analytics and data integration company. We've been in business for 30 years. In fact, we are celebrating our anniversary here at reInvent. We had a big party. Had a big party yesterday. Um, strong partners with AWS. We really bring a lot to the table for those customers that want to move their data to AWS. They want to run their workloads in AWS, so we really are thrilled to be here at reInvent. So analytics is a quiet little backwater of the industry at the moment. Nobody's talking about that stuff. I joke, obviously. Yeah. There's lots going on. Yeah. How should people be thinking about you guys in the context of all of the noise and the buzz that's going on? We, we're hearing lots about generative AI, obviously. We're here at reInvent and, and AWS have launched Q. There's all the stuff that they're doing with Bedrock as well. Where should we be thinking about you in the as in the sort of context of everything that's going on in the industry that's, right now? It's a great question. So, I mean, if you think about AI, the buzz around AI, it, it's it is here to stay. Yeah, right. It is absolutely. I think here we're to stay. only in the first innings of it. I don't oh, think. Completely. I, I, although this year's been crazy, and every vendor's been talking about it, we're still so early. Yeah, and we're. I mean, one of the sessions that I'm running uh, actually later today, oddly enough, we are going to talk about AI. So where Click really fits in is, you really need to think about. AI in, in the context of traditional AI techniques around machine learning, things like that. And then generative is adding a whole other layer there. And so Click can help you get that data that you need to bring into your models. It can help you manage it, manage the data quality, and then it can help you actually identify patterns within that data. And the most important thing is not just the analysis of the data and getting it, it's what you do with it. So Click in our platform allows you to actually take actions on those decisions right within your the processes that you're running. So we hear a lot about data curation, data preparation, vector databases, people sort of getting that data ready. Where should we be thinking about sort of click and what's the conversations you're having with some of your clients as they start to get ready? You know, I'm hearing small language models, large language models. I'm hearing kind of a lot of this open source kind of space, mm -hmm. where should we be thinking about you guys in that so, context? So the, let's, it all starts with our customers, right? And so we're talking to a lot of our customers. They've all the kicked the tires on the open, open AI, right? So a lot of our customers are realizing that that data isn't necessarily curated in the way they need it. So what we're hearing from our customers is that they look to us around getting access to that data and making sure it's going to be governed in a way that will allow them to manage the risk for their business. And in fact, You'll actually hear in one of my presentations, one of the missteps customers make is they forget about the quality of the data, especially in generative space. So you talked about this, the five missteps presentation yeah. that you're doing. Maybe for some people who aren't at the event, can you sort of give us the pricey of that? What are those steps and what should people be thinking about? Yeah, I mean, there are really, there, there are five things we want you to think about. First and foremost, and it, it's amazing to me in 2023, I'm having this conversation you actually need to start with what business problem you're trying to solve. It's not technology for technology's sake. We're still having that it's conversation. It's still happening. We're still having that conversation in 2023. You need to think about that. Don't forget about your data, right? The data and what you're starting with is critical. It's not just getting some data, it's getting the data you need to make some of those critical business decisions. Uh, a third area that we're really thinking about is don't forget about traditional techniques. It's not all generative AI. There are machine learning techniques and other techniques that that you want to apply. Always make sure that you're taking a smart approach to managing that data, constantly updating it, refreshing your models. And then finally, pick the right model for you, right? If you are, if an open model is right for you, do that. If a private model is right for you, do that. If a combination, we really want to embrace that. So I said there are five, but there's actually six. You're going to have to rename your presentation. I am actually, and, and legal is going to be very upset with that, obviously. <laughs> um, the sixth one is don't forget about the humans. Keep the human in the loop, right? It's it's sort of like- um, Is that for validation of the answers? Is that for thinking about kind of a, a human checkpoint? Is that guardrails? What 
maybe expand there a uh, moment. That's, it's, it's an interesting point. There are going to be some decisions where you can just automate them, right? Yeah. The, the risk to your business is, is small. And as you listen to uh, Dr. Jay Ganesh, who's speaking with me uh, later today, he really talks about the human in the loop and there are three types of decisions, right? There are micro decisions that he's thinking about that minimal risk to the business. There's sort of macro, but not quite strategic level mm -hmm. decisions, macro level decisions where you want to have a human be part of the process, whether it's from the data prep or anal analyzing. And then there are bigger ones that per they really present a bit of a risk to their business. And that's where they're keeping the human in the loop. So to, to continually train those models. I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, it, I think, as we say, we're still at the early stages of this governance hallucinations. Mm -hmm. You know, these models are improving on an hour by hour basis with the innovation yep. that's going on. But I still think there's a case for human oversight or governance in a lot of cases. So we're here at reInvent. Mm -hmm. You guys are doing a lot with AWS. Maybe just double click on that for a moment and tell us what the partnership and collaboration looks like. So we've been an AWS customer for years, right? We build our cloud platform on it. Um, and from an analytics perspective, one of the more interesting things that we've come out with recently is the Bedrock connector. So mm -hmm. Bedrock is a way that we can take advantage of those large language models. And we're actually showing how you can take traditional analytics and dashboarding and everything that goes along with that bring it into bedrock and have it tell you a story about your data so that you know where you need to focus so we're really a slang term is we're really jazzed about it right we're really excited about it we think it presents a tremendous opportunity for those customers that use traditional bi and business intelligence to combine it with large language models and generative so it's the combination of the stuff you've been doing for the last 30 years but partnering with AWS and the Bedrock solution Completely. to take it to the next level. Absolutely. So as we start to wrap here, what should those vendors and clients and partners be thinking about as they look to partner with Click? What would the three takeaways be? The three you'd... takeaways. Wow, that's that's putting me on the spot. I know. Here. I asked the tough questions. You asked the tough question. You did warn me about page two. Yeah, so that's, that's on page two that you didn't see. That's great. Um, so as we, the three things that we want customers to be thinking about. Number one, from a from an AI perspective, don't forget about your data, mm -hmm. right? And think about what it's going to take. And Click can really help get that data, help you curate that data, help you manage that data. Second thing is, don't forget about some of your traditional business intelligence, as well as traditional ML techniques. And third, you really want to do this in a way that is going to not get you locked into a specific vendor, right? You want to try to be as um, neutral as you can and work with someone who's not going to want to own your data, and that's not us. Well, I think that's there's us. a couple of things there that, that optionality is key. I think as, we, as we've as we said, we're at the early stages of this, mm -hmm. so it, the temptation to over-partner and over-specify and, and sort of get yourself locked in. The other piece I liked about what you were saying there was the, the ML and the, the analytics and some of the BI piece. I think everybody's rushed to generative AI, and that's valid. We, you know, everybody's going to need a chatbot or a copilot mm -hmm. or what you know, a Q if that's AWS this week. You know, whatever they're going to need there. There's a lot of value still to be had at that AI. Level. The really interesting angle we we ran a customer event a few weeks ago at our at our Lund headquarters, and I asked the question. I said, "Who here is interested in AI?" And everybody raised their hand. Second, who here would take a meeting with us because we we have a story around AI. Everyone raised their hand. The last question I asked, who here is going to build a pretty pivot table and provide that to their end users? Everybody raised their hand. So everybody understands they need AI, but they are all seeing that this is an evolution and a journey, right? And, they, and the, the people that are going to get it right are going to make it an evolution and make sure that it supports their business in the way that is going to help them grow. So Brendan, you, you practiced the perfect summary to finish our conversation. So thank you for that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for being on the show. You've been watching the Future in Tech webcast live from AWS reInvent. Please click on some of our other shows and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks very much for watching.